Well, Dave, thanks so much for those uh, extremely kind words. Um, I didn't really know all that about myself, but I appreciate you sharing that with everybody here. Uh, as I look around and I see people shivering with their coats on and like this, it reminds me of Olean uh, in, in August, right? Because if it was Olean now, you'd have hats and gloves and parkas and be snowing outside. So uh, thanks for making me feel at home with the, uh, the air conditioning uh, in here today. Uh, 30 million, uh, you know, that's a number that right now just boggles my mind. Uh, as Dave mentioned, I started selling cuckoo in 1986. I'm going to say, Lauren, you might have been the only one, right, or close to it, that was that in this room that uh, was there at that time. And, um, you know, the company had a goal. I remember uh, my first year in banquet, and the goal was for the company someday to hit $30 million in sales for the entire company. And it didn't happen in 1987, and it didn't happen in 1988, and it didn't happen in 1999. It took us four years for us to hit that $30 million mark. Uh, so that'll kind of put into perspective how amazing it is that $30 million was achieved uh, by the Cutco Events team this year. So again, give yourself a big round of applause for that. <laughs> You know, Dave mentioned that uh, 10 years uh, ago, I, uh, I left the New Jersey office and, and moved to Olean, and at that point was kind of handing off the baton. They were giving me some different uh, responsibilities, and the program was kind of, you know, what I thought was in a, in a good place and a good, a good stage at that point, and as Dave mentioned, a little over 1,000 events. Um, I, I do remember that we only had reports from 74%, wherever Dave is, so you guys have done a great job of reporting, uh, and, and we had about $5 million in sales. So the fact that that program has, gr has grown that much, again, I can take zero credit for that. Uh, as John Kane and I talk about all the time, we were just, uh, you know, the two guys that planted a seed, and that was about it. And uh, Dave and his team have done some amazing things to make it happen. Uh, I can guarantee you if I was in that same role, we would not be at $30 million right now. I know that for a fact. Uh, Dave has a way of looking at the business, at the program, uh, diving in deep, and his passion for it is just, it just amazes me and John all the time. Uh, and the support that he has from the, from the team, uh, just hats off. And again, congratulations. Let's hear it for the Cutco Events team. <laughs> Uh, Dave asked me to share a little bit of, uh, of, of what the events program means uh, for the company. And I know a lot of you would probably say, well, it's great and it's $30 million. And yeah, that's nice. Uh, but I know if Jim Stitt Jr. was here right now, he'd say that's not uh, the only reason. In fact, it might not even be the most important reason that we have uh, for our Fair and Show team or our Cutco Events team. Okay? I, I know you mentioned earlier about reconnecting with old customers. You know, we've done a lot of in-home presentations over the years. We've had a lot of uh, sales representatives that have come and gone, and there's a lot of people out there that just don't know that we still exist. And the ability for them to walk by a booth and see, oh my God, Cutco's still around, and that ability to talk with somebody and purchase more product, obviously, is a huge, huge benefit. You know, not everybody uh, in our organization is professional as you are, and uh, we sometimes have a little image problem. And so, you know, some of you, or most of you, I guess, started off at selling when you were in high school or in college, and sometimes those people don't represent Cutco in the most important and the best light. So the ability for people to see that Cutco is a professional organization, Vector, however you want to put that, okay, is professional, the ability to change somebody's perception that we're not that company that hires kids to, to sell to their family and friends, is wonderful for the existence long-term of our business, okay? So thank you for the work that you do and being professional and showing customers we're more than just kids selling knives around the kitchen table. You know, the, the ability to provide service. Uh, today, I think, uh, somebody mentioned, how many 750 uh, service call elites? Is that, is that the number, 720? What's the number, okay? You know, one of the things that I know that makes Jim Stead Jr., probably the most, I've seen him upset twice in the 10 years I've been in Olean, okay? And it's when somebody calls up and says, so-and-so came over to my house and they sharpened my knives, but they really didn't sharpen my knives. They actually did me a disservice, and then at the end they tried to sell me more product. What kind of company are you running? And as a gentleman who owns a company and has been in, involved in it his, his entire life, you know, when we have a program now, the service call elite, and the ability to people to walk up to a booth and say, hey, 
I need to get my knife serviced, and we can send a professional out there, again, representing the company in the best light. It's a great opportunity, and I know that, again, we wouldn't have that to the extent we do if it wasn't for the events program. So thank you again for all of that. You know, as Dave mentioned, as Dave mentioned, um, we gather a tremendous amount of, of information from our customers. We do surveys, we do contests, we have outside agencies, we do research, we do all these things. And Dave mentioned that uh, I have a, a weekly or daily marketing meeting. Every single morning at 9 o'clock, the entire team meets, and we spend a minimum of one half hour. On Wednesdays, it's an entire hour. And we just talk about what's going on for the day, the week, what projects that we're working on, what things we're looking forward to in the future. And Dave sits in on those about four days a week if he's in town. Um, and the ability for us to kind of say, hey, this is what we're excited about. And I share a lot of things from the research that we get. And Dave said, hey, it'd be really cool if you could share some of that uh, with the team uh, at the conference. And I said, no problem. I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to teach you any amazing selling techniques. Okay? My career sales are about $65,000. And I'm going to say 99% of those were sold at least 25 years ago, if not more. Probably closer to about 30 years ago, okay? So I'm not going to tell you anything that you can use at the booth. You've heard it from Josh, you've heard it from Brandon, you've heard it from Seth today, all right? I'm not going to give you any amazing selling techniques. What I hope that I can share with you today is some things that you might be able to kind of have in the back of your mind when you're setting up your booth, when you're talking to a customer, Okay, when you're at different events, some things that you might be able to use to help relate better to the customers, what we're calling the Cutco customers, the ones that we deal with uh, on a daily and weekly basis. You know, there's a lot of parallels between corporate marketing and your individual marketing. Okay, uh, wouldn't it be great, uh, for those of you, I saw 99% of the people raise their hand that were on Vast Action, which by the way is outstanding. Okay, love the fact that you're communicating with your customers. Okay, love the fact that it's being professional, love the fact that you're getting out in front of them, all right? But wouldn't it be great if every time that you knew a customer was going to buy that you could send them a catalog, or if you knew that they were going to buy, you could send them an email and just those customers, not all the other ones that aren't buying, wouldn't that be awesome? Okay. That would be pretty cool for us as well. We send out a lot of catalogs, a lot of emails. Wouldn't it be great if you knew what content was going to resonate with your customer? Wouldn't you know if it was this was the recipe, or this was the tip, or this was the video? that they wanted that helped them make that buying decision, and then you could just hit a button and automatically it would go to that customer. Wouldn't that be pretty cool? All right. Yeah, that would be awesome. I'd like that too, <laughs> OK? Um, I think we also face, both face very similar challenges. And uh, a lot of this stuff was already mentioned today, all right? Uh, I know Josh brought up the fact that uh, all of you have heard that uh, I have everything that Cutco makes, right? Isn't that great? I go, really? got 153 different products? That's unbelievable. I don't even have everything that Cutco makes. That's awesome. Right? And they think everything we make is a homemaker set, right? So we face that challenge as well. You know, getting people to buy that say, I have all the knives I need. What do you have? Well, I have a spatula and I have a paring knife. That's it? That's all you need? All right. So uh, the, the, the challenges that you're facing are the same ones that we have. Um, you know, uh, we, we talked about earlier, someone mentioned earlier about how Cutco makes a wonderful gift, okay? In our mind, it's like, well, of course it does. It's a great product. It's used every day, but we, we heard that earlier. But a lot of times when you say that to people, they just don't realize, I never thought about Cutco as a gift, all right? So we're facing those same challenges. The problem that we have is we don't have the ability to interact with those customers face-to-face -face as you do at the booth, okay? We have to try to create that emotion, that desire, that need by using just words and pictures and maybe a little bit of video. Okay, so how do we get emotion? How do we get desire? How do we create that by sending out an email or a, a print piece of, uh, of, of a catalog? Okay, so that's kind of the challenge that we face. And how do we know what content's going to resonate with our customers? I'm going to share with you a, uh, a bit, a bits and pieces of a presentation that I shared with our team, our marketing team, which kind of helps them Again, understand a little bit more about our customers, thought process, some of the problems that they have, ways that we can think when we say, hey, we're going to send out this email, we're going to create this piece of content, we're going to get this catalog, you know, what should it look like, what's the tone, what's the manner, what's the pictures, you know, what are we sharing with the customer uh, at when we do that, okay? All right, let's 
see if I can now. Uh, hopefully it's the big green button, right? Look at that. All right. Here's what I know. Okay, I know that over the past four decades, what the kitchen stands for still holds true. That has not changed. It doesn't matter what's going on in the outside world. It doesn't matter what's happening anywhere. All right. What the kitchen stands for is the same. All right. Family meals, celebrations, connections, okay, favorite dishes, creating memories. These are the things that the kitchen has always stood for and always will continue to stand for. All right. Daily recaps. All right. Why is the kitchen, when we talk about it, the kitchen is the heart of the home, right? Entertaining. What do people do? They gather in the kitchen. It's, it's food. It's great memories. It's stuff that we know that we want to focus on when we're talking with our customer. What do you think the number one response is when we ask our customers why they don't make more meals at home? Time. Bingo. Okay. All right. Over the years, the value of the kitchen hasn't changed, but what's standing in the way of more meals at home, okay, and using being in the kitchen, preparing them? Bingo, it's time. Okay, that's the number one. All right, parents saying, that, hey, I don't have enough time, we got busy lives, busy schedules, all that stuff. Okay, what do you think the number two answer was after time? I heard right tool, Josh, what was that? Knowledge, bingo. Okay, what else? The skills needed. Okay, they don't have the skills needed to be able to prepare meals uh, the way that they, they feel they should be. Okay, preparing the skills needed. All right. But that's not stopping people from trying. Okay, uh, 64 is it 64 percent? Yes, 64 percent of the households. All right, now with uh, with uh, Tasty and all these other places out there, at least they're attempting to try to make meals that are somewhat healthy that again might be able to uh, not take a lot of time and they don't need a tremendous amount of skills to be able to cook. All right, so what can they do? What kind of experiences can they have in their kitchen um, while they're trying to, uh, to make the meals, okay? So our mission, all right, our mission, our chant, knives in hand, meals on plates, soup in pots, all right, trays in ovens and dinners on kitchen tables, all right? Yeah, okay. So that's what we're trying to do. How can we get customers to go back to the older, older times? Okay, again, knives in hand, meals on plates, soups and soups in pots, trays and ovens, and dinners on kitchen tables. Okay. So how do we get uh, so how do we get past these barriers? Okay, number one, the time available. Okay, the skills that are needed, okay, and there's a lot of alternative uh, options out there, okay? So how do we convince and how do we inspire our customers to go out there uh, and to get back involved in the kitchen? I can tell you what it's not, and it's not these guys. <laughs> it's not what they're looking for, not at all, okay? 15% of the people buy a purchase, a, a knife that a chef uses. Most of them, what do they want? They want the knife to be well-made and highly reviewed. Well-made, cut coat, check. Highly reviewed, cut coat, check. Okay, all right. Highly reviewed and well-made, all right. So what's our focus? What are we focusing on? We are focusing on cooks, not chefs, okay? And students, not teachers. Cooks, not chefs, students, not teachers. And what this means, okay, this means less of this and more of this. Okay, this means going from hardcore to explore. Courses to meals. Expert to novice. Competition to community. Perfection to connection. Okay. Again, cooks, not chefs. Okay. I love some of the wording that we provided here. Okay. Cuck who is the knife of cooks. Experiments in the kitchen. They're not there to make a masterpiece. They focus on the yum. All right. They whip up meals, not courses. Okay. They are a community of creators. They cook to share, not to impress. They are rated by full stomachs and not five stars. 
okay? Full stomachs, not five stars. They are cooks. They are homemade in the making, all right? So, core beliefs. Cooking can be imperfect because imperfection still tastes great, okay? Most of the people are not good cooks, all right? But it can still taste good and it can still be fun, okay? Spontaneity in the kitchen is, is what, what they need. No hassle. Return them to the joy of cooking. Make cooking fun for them. And how do we do that? By obviously providing them with the best knife possible. Now, this is something that we say internally. We would never share this with our customers face to face. I highly recommend you do not say this at the booth. This is probably not. This is, uh, what, what did Josh say? Nugget, right? Nugget? This is the nugget, Josh, right here. Okay? Every imperfect cook needs a perfect knife. <laughs> I don't think you want to call them out on their lack of skills, all right? But in your mind and in their mind, oh, I could never make that, or I don't know how to use that knife, or I'm not good at that, okay? Guess what, Mrs. Jones, you don't have to be. Why? Because you've got Cutco, okay? Bless you. Okay. So our mission, to cultivate and create an army of cooks through the joy of meal exploration, okay? How can we get people to go into the kitchen again, having the idea that it's gonna be fun because I've got the good knives, I'm gonna have the information, the knowledge to be able to go in there, create some memories, and have some connection with my family. Again, focusing on cooks, not chefs. Okay, how does this impact, all right? Uh, the Cutco Kitchen, all right? The Sunday supper that we send out every single Friday, all right, we send out to our customers and gives them a recipe, very simple, easy to make, ideas that they can use to cook uh, the family meal on Sunday. All right. Talking about, again, focusing on their lifestyles, giving them reason to pick up the knives and get back into the kitchen. All right. Rest, uh, inspire more moments and experiences that Cutco could help create. Again, there's the Sunday supper, as I mentioned in the last one. All right. Uh, who, who said it earlier about when, when customers walk by, you don't judge that customer, you never know who they're going to be, okay? Everybody's a cook, all right? More men are in the kitchen cooking now than ever before. Don't discard them. Don't discount them. All right, this right here, if you can do the math quickly, this is the true 110%, okay? <laughs> We have 45% of cooking enthusiasts, and the other 65%, uh, which gets us to 110, are the wannabe cooks. So we have a tremendous amount of opportunity available out there, people that, again, are just looking for information and the skills, the how-to, to be able to get back into the kitchen, all right? Focusing on their behaviors, on the emotions, on the moments, all right? I know that uh, I think Brandon talked about that earlier as well, all right? Uh, how do we, um, you know, what are some of the things that we do uh, when, we, when we send out our catalogs, how we focus on these three and make sure that we're touching on all of them and all of our content and the pieces that we have. Okay, again, cooks of all kinds, all right? Two, own the prep, all right? Meal kits, pretty big nowadays, right? That answers the question about I don't have enough time. But even if they're taking advantage of meal kits, what do they need to do? They need to prep. They need to prep. So even if they add, that's great. Okay, you still need a quality knife to be able to cut and to prep that. So we need to be the ones that are known to own the prep. Inspire. Make it easy. Inspire the families, okay? 64% of young families are having dinner together. But that doesn't mean that they're cooking every day in the kitchen. All that means is that they're having meals together. So how can we inspire them again to say, hey, it's easy. You can do this. Cutco's going to be there side by side. We have a saying, it's the trusty lieutenant. It's always there for you. Okay. Show them that cooking can be easy. All right. Making it simple. All right. There's so many things out there that customers can focus on, that we focus on. We try to get our, our recipes to be a minimum number of ingredients, a minimum number of, of cooking um, or, or knife skills. Okay. They don't have the time. They don't have the skills. So we want to make sure, give them confidence, inspire them and make it easy for them. Okay, so in summary here on this part, so what we have, we have the barriers, right? Don't have the time, don't have the skill, 
so many other things that I could be doing out there, right? Big idea, right? Every imperfect cook needs a perfect knife. Cooks of all kinds, own the prep, keep it simple, all right? And make cooking uh, fun uh, and simple for uh, the customers, all right? Inspired by the families. So with that in mind, uh, recently we changed on cuckoo.com. We used to have a, a, a header that said resources, and we changed that to the Cutco Learning Center. Okay, because resources, what does that mean? Okay, Learning Center, pretty simple, right? So we have on there product care, we have product guides, uh, we have how-to videos, testimonials, uh, we have customer stories, we have the guarantee, we have recipes, okay? easy, digestible things that the customers are looking for to help solve those problems, not having the skills available uh, to cook. Since June, uh, we got a, uh, a new software, a uh, piece of software that helps us um, keep track of all the content that we provide for our customers, okay? In the past six months, we've created 587 pieces of content. 587 pieces, that's almost 85, 90 pieces per day uh, that we've created as a team uh, to share with our customers, all right? As you can see on there, the projects are broken down to the fall campaign, awareness campaign, holiday contest stores, uh, Cutco at Home, summer campaign, uh, National Knife Day, we had our, our pink promotion, I think, is on there, and some other pieces. 587 pieces of content created in a six-month span. Okay. We also had that broken down in terms on by what type. 133 of those pieces were used for email. 76 of those were used on Facebook. 69 were on blog posts. Uh, 44 homepage, 44 promotion pages, 30 Instagram, 27 on e-newsletter. 20 for signs, 19 for flyers, 19 product pages, and then a bunch of other stuff that we had there, all right? So you can see we're not just creating content for one channel, okay, or one place, but we're creating it in multiple places so we can reach the maximum amount of customers. I wanna take your uh, attention down to, right down in this area here, okay? So those are buying stages. Uh, it's kinda hard to see there, but it says uh, conversion, uh, advocacy, consideration, and awareness. We have 329 pieces that we did that were prepared for conversion. That's just a little over 50%. So half the pieces that, we are, that we're um, preparing go towards sales. The other half does not. Okay, so think about your marketing efforts. Are you sending them something that says buy, buy, buy every single time or sale, sale, sale? Because your customer is going to get turned off real quick on that. Half of our pieces are designed for building long-term relationships with the customer, making them familiar with the product, awareness, advocacy, taking care of our customers that are super fans and how they can help share the word about Cutco, all right? And then you can see we also have down here, we have different buying personas, okay, different customers that we target different things to. So if a customer's in a stage where they, hey, they're in the consideration stage, all right, we send them different information and different pieces that they see based upon uh, their activities. Okay, so think about in your own marketing efforts, you know, are you taking advantage of all the different customers? Are you taking advantage of all the different uh, buyer stages and personas out there uh, when you're sending out your marketing pieces? If you're sending the same email every time, you're not going to get great results, okay? Uh, we just launched this for the first time this past Saturday. This is our social Saturday, all right? Uh, Facebook as all of you are probably well aware, they like to change things up on us all the time without telling us or the reasoning behind it. So the newest and the latest is that no longer is likes the most important thing, now it's engagement, okay? So how do we get our customers engaged? That's the information that's gonna rise to the top. That's the information that they choose to be able to, to, to put out in front of the most amount of people. So Social Saturday is, uh, uh, we do this every two weeks. I said our, our first one was this past Saturday where what we're doing is we're taking the highlight of the, the best of the past two weeks and sharing it with our very best customers, the ones that are the most engaged with us. Okay, so you can see uh, we had a little, um, some little videos on there, uh, how to cut carbs, okay? Uh, one of the best posts that we had was, how old is your Cutco? Be amazed at how many people came back and sh shared their story as Cutco customers love to do, tell you how long they've had it and what they have. 
Okay, share your slice, gets them the ability to engage, show us, hey, when, uh, when you've used the product, take a picture of what you cut. Okay, testimonials, all right, uh, the happy customer list, this is our version of the happy customer list. Okay, every single Friday, Dave loves this, is one of his favorite parts of the whole entire uh, week, is we take all the reviews that we get for the entire week and we narrow it down to the top three, and then we pick the best one. The whole team votes on it, and it's usually pretty heated, right, Dave? Sometimes we have tiebreakers, and we gotta get the events team involved, and then what we do is we send that customer a little note with an engraved spatula that says, thanks for spreading the love, okay? And we do that 52 times a year. And the amazing pe I mean, you'd be amazed at how people come back to us and say, I can't believe, wow, this is the amazing thing. All I did was say, I love Cutco, and you sent me this. And again, how do we get those customers engaged in sharing the story uh, that they're spreading the love uh, about Cutco? Uh, Pinterest, obviously huge, probably our biggest platform right now. Okay, some of the things that we do on Pinterest, pictures that we show, people love to repin. Cutco shots. All right. Uh, and then there's the whole email. I just it was too big to show you side by side. So that's the sun, Sunday social or the sun, social Saturday. Sorry, not to be confused with the uh, Sunday supper. All right. So that's something that we're doing again to help to help customers to be able to share that information uh, going to, out to our best best customers. Again, time to keep it light, keep it bright. Uh, really quick, easy, digestible pieces that they can click on what they want to see uh, and be able to share that. Okay. All right. I think I have one last slide. And if you're going to listen to anything that I'm going to say or have said, this is the most important thing, okay? We are here to complement, not to compete, okay? This is not a competition. We are not trying to steal customers. We are not trying to get all the sales to come corporately, not at all, okay? We are here to complement as best as we possibly can, all right? That is the goal. How do we continue to build brand awareness? The more people that know about Cutco, the better it is for everybody. All right. Not just us corporately. Okay, we know you can do a better job of selling than we can. You have the face-to-face. -face. You have better selling skills than we do. You're much better at it than we are. So again, we'd much rather have you make the sale than have us make the sale. Again, compete not to compete, but to compliment. All right, so I have a couple last little things here for you. This is my keys and my wish list, all right? So if, again, now that's what, uh, just a couple last little things, all right. Please, please, please help us eliminate the disconnect, okay? And what I mean by eliminate the disconnect is the consistency of how we market or you market and how the customer sees us at the booth, sees our product displays, see how the product is being used, okay? You can't have the world's finest cutlery being sold by somebody with a t-shirt that's got a big hole in it. There's a disconnect there, all right? So make sure that you're always being professional. I know that all of you are, but the people that are on your team might not always be, so make sure that we eliminate the disconnect. Maximizing your events, do the best you can, okay? Expectation, again, Cutco is not cheap, we all know that. It's got a high price tag. Make sure when someone walks up to your booth, they see that. They see that this is a professional. Okay, this is not the kid at the kitchen table that doesn't know what they're doing and has their training manual in front of them. Okay, you're representing okay, the corporation at this point. So make sure, again, maximizing events, sharing the professionalism. Tailor your events to your audience. Okay, little things can make a big, huge difference. You can't have the same booth at a gun show that you can at a flower show. Different customers, different clientele. We don't have the same stuff in our, in our marketing efforts. Cutco Stores has different stuff than Cutco at Home, which has different stuff than our catalog, which is different from our email. All right. They're different customers, so make sure that you're tailoring to your event. Okay. Um, individual attention. Brandon mentioned earlier, you know, about you never know who's going to walk by the booth and treating every single customer with the utmost respect. Okay. You never know. I always say, treat your customer how you want to be treated as a consumer. So think about when you're a consumer and you go to a store and you're dealing with a salesperson, how do you like to be treated? Make sure that's how you're treating the customers that walk up to the booth, okay? And again, you never ever know who's gonna approach that booth. I love the fact, wouldn't it be great? Like, was it you that said, if you could guarantee that somebody that, that day was gonna buy $10,000, would your, would your mindset be different? Of course it would, all right, of course it would.
Use testimonials. We know that for a fact that customers, and I don't I need to tell you this because you guys all have your happy customer list and you know how great it is that you know sometimes when a customer comes up and they're just gushing about Cutco and you just stand back and they make the sale for you. Okay. Make sure you have as much testimonials as you possibly can. All right. There's tons of them out there available. We've got them all over our website. Okay. And the last thing, I, my, my last little wish list here is stay top of mind with your customers. Okay, do whatever it takes to stay top of mind in your customers so when the opportunity in their mind is to purchase, they think of you first. They know how to get in touch with you. They know how to reach you. They know that you're going to give them the best service possible and provide them with the best buying experience. All right. Again, we're here to compliment, not to compete. All of you, how many of you have portals? Probably most of the room has a rep portal. Okay, awesome. Okay, get your customers to get to your portal. Your portal takes them to the website, okay? Once the customer clicks on one of your emails or clicks on your portal, they are cookied into your portal. So if they type in cuckoo.com, they land on your homepage, all right? So again, if they go to your portal and they make a purchase, you get paid. So take advantage of that resource, the Learning Center, okay? It's got a lot of great stuff, the recipes, all that information. We're not asking you to provide and prepare you know, 587 pieces of content. You don't need to do that. We have that information out there for you. Okay? Get your customers to the portal. Portal takes them to the website. They purchase from your portal. You get paid. They're cookied in. Okay? And I'll leave you with one final thought. My final thought for you is that team beats talent every single time when talent is in a team. And before me is an amazing team. I cannot thank you enough for everything that you did in 2017 and I look forward to another 30 million. Thank you.